Now that we've installed a Glassfish cluster, the next step is install a web server. In this case, the Oracle iPlanet Web Server 7. When installing the iPlanet Web Server, uh, basically two instances are created. One is the web administration server that's used to administer uh, HTTP uh, instances and a default HTTP instance is also created. So let's get started. Okay, in this case we'll be using the VirtualBox instance uh, to actually do the installation so we can see the graphical user interface. So the first step is to uh, unpack the um, web server. Okay, now that we've unpacked uh, the web server, let's take a look. Okay, one of the things you'll notice is there's now a setup program. So we're actually going to execute that setup program. This will start a GUI. Yes, we agree with the license terms. I'm going to change the default directory to be home glassfish web server 7. Again, glassfish is the user that we're currently logged in as. Yes, we want to create the directory. We're going to just use a, an express install. Keep things simple. And the administrator's web server defaults to the admin user. Now we have to create a password. And it's really going to need to be, I believe it's six or eight characters or longer. So we're just going to use admin admin. If it isn't uh, long enough, the load balancer plugin installer uh, that I'll show you later is going to complain. Okay, and note that the start administration server checkbox is checked. So we're going to go ahead and install. Okay, we're going to skip the registration step and the installation was successful. So at this point we have a running uh, admin server. Okay, now that we've installed the web server, the next step is to point to the administration console of the web server, which by default is port 8989. Now you might get a warning about an untrusted uh, website if you try to go there, and that's simply because by default the uh, web server's administration server has a self-signed certificate. Okay, and we're going to log in with the credentials we gave before. We're not going to register. And what we're going to do now is create a surfer certificate. And this certificate is going to be used to secure communications between the load balancer plugin and the domain administration server of Glassfish. Okay, next. An internal token is fine. The name of the server we'll say is Glassfish. The RSA key is uh, 1024 bits, that's fine. And this is a self-signed certificate. We'll just take the default nickname. And there we go. Certificate was successfully created. Now what we're going to do is create an HTTP listener for the web server instance um, they'll be used for secure communications. So actually let's go to edit configuration of this instance. We'll click on the default listener. Notice this is port 8081. Um, with most installations this will be 8080. But since Glassfish is listening on port 8080 the web server picked a different default. So, Okay, a new HTTP listener. This is going to be port 8082 with the server name of Glassfish. And notice we're going to take a or check, check <laughs> this checkbox to enable SSL and we're going to use that certificate that we just created, the self-signed one. And this is it. Successfully created the listener. Now one additional thing I want to do is when we go into the listener, we now want to go under the SSL tab and client authentication right now says false so it's actually not going to do 
um, authentication using the certificate. So we want to make this optional so that it, it will uh, uh, now accept that certificate as a means of secure authentication. Here we go. And apply. Oops, just in case. And close. So at this point we have a secure HTTP listener and we have to deploy this out to the instance. So we've done a lot of configuration but we haven't pushed the configuration to the instance. Okay, and deploy. There we go. So now we're done with basically setting up the web server.